Welcome to part two in the series of taking a concept and prototype to a product. Starring my laser LED sign. I did the schematic and the design of this in the first video, which you can watch again just here if you haven't already. And this is the board. So firstly, a disclaimer. You might have seen on the previous video I mentioned that in my design I had a resistor implemented wrong and I needed to fix it before I sent them off to get manufactured. I forgot. It's this little resistor here. It's 430k. This is supposed to be going to ground, but unfortunately it's not. At the time I had some other boards in production at JLC PCB, and as usual I like to minimise my shipping costs by getting as many boards done as possible at the same time. Well. I didn't have long to get this into submission, so I quickly rushed it, put it in, and forgot to fix the resistor. That's okay, I'm going to just stick a zero ohm resistor across this for now. It's only a discharge resistor, and in this case it's not really needed. I'm going to take one of these off, so I had them panelized, as you can see. Pull these tabs off. And let's stencil it up. So I've got my stencil ready to go, as you can see here, I've already got my layout done. I'm using some revision 4 of my SAMD manglers, which don't work. I mean, they work for my QFP, but not my QFM. So let's put this in place. I'm going to also just stick this down. Sometimes when I paste a small board on the stencil, I lift the stencil up, the board sticks to the stencil because of the tackiness of the paste, and I don't want to have that happen. I'm going to use some of my new paste, it's this paste here. It's a low temp paste, just like my other paste I use, but it's in a syringe and thought I'd give it a go. It's just a cheapy, cheapy paste. It'll be interesting to see how well it works. I don't need a lot. It has not been in the fridge yet though, it only just got delivered to me. So it might be super soft. Okay, here we go. Might have to do this in a couple of passes. Okay, yeah, I'm going to have to do this in a few passes it looks like. Okay, not enough paste. It seems. This is not how you apply paste, folks. Don't do this at home. Okay, well, let's see how we went. That actually looks fine. Surprise, surprise. So I'm going to unstick this, pull it out, and move this aside. Okay, it's now time to assemble the board. I've got some of my parts already. So let's start off by putting the AT Tiny on. Make sure it's the right way around. Great. I'll we'll stick our button on. Now I've already programmed the AT Tiny just with some strand test code. I'm going to put some one microfarad caps on now. There's a few of these. I'm going to put the ones underneath the pixels first because they're very close to the pixels, so they're much easier to put on first in this case. So if you remember from my first video, this board is all about making it easier to build these. So there's no point putting them together in a way that makes it hard for me. We now have some pixels we can put on. Let's put that out of the way. Okay, let's get them out. Okay, let's turn them all the right way around. Okay, they've all got the little triangle on the top left. Okay, it looks pretty good. We need to put a 10 microfarad cap. Okay, I don't have an 0805 zero ohm, but I've got a one ohm. It's next to the cap. Except it's stuck to my tweezers. Bit annoying. Okay, we have a 330 ohm resistor that goes on the data line. Just here. And finally, we have two 10k resistors. This one here that is for the LDR. And this one here is for pull-up for the button. And of course, the 80 tiny 85 I could have done an internal pull-up and save myself a component, but I didn't. Last but not least, favourite friend, the USB. Push it down with my finger, get it in the holes. Perfect, okay. Let's make sure everything's nice and straight. Move the uh, tiny over a fraction. Awesome, let's put it in the oven. Okay, the reflow is done. Let's take the board out of the oven and put it on the heatsink to cool it down. That actually looks pretty good. Okay. Yep, it's getting there. It's gonna go a little bit cooler. Okay. So before we do anything, before we plug anything in, I'm just going to 
add a bit of solder to the sides of the USB just to reinforce it. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now it's time to see if it works. Let's plug our USB cable in. Oh, look at that. We have rainbow. So it works. So I still have to put a button on, which is a through hole button, and the LDR. But as you can see, it's all working. I'm not going to put any header pins in for here. I'm going to use my Pogo pins to program this now that it's been put together. But what we need to do now is get the button and the LDR on, and then we need to look at designing a case for it. Okay, so here's a button, and here is an LDR that we're going to put on. So first let's fit the button into place. Okay, it's just there. So as you can see, the button will stick out the back, so it'll be nice and easy to push. And the LDR, we're going to want to bend that to face the outside, to be probably a little bit less than the button. So probably about... Is that too far? I'm not sure. I'm better, we're better off having it a bit less than more. Maybe like that. Because I don't actually have a case design yet, I can design around whatever I do now. Excellent. Okay, let's solder that up. Probably should have used some blue tack to hold it still. I'll use my helping hands. And the mechanical, structural. Awesome. Okay, so let that cool. Take these ends off. Okay, and that is the finished product. So now we just have to design a case around it. Starting off with a base that will sit in. So you can see we've got two holes here and one hole over here to insert into a base. That should be enough to hold it steady. There's really only these parts here that are sticking down. I could probably trim them a little bit, but I could also leave a bit of a cavity inside the 3D printed base for that as well to make sure that everything sits nice and flush. So these holes here are just to lock it in place so it doesn't move. So that's going to come in part three of the series. So stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching. I will catch you all in part three. Bye.